Hey up everybody, welcome back to the Aldo Cycling YouTube channel where today I'm going to be doing a preview of the Etoile de Bessege with the Vuelta San Juan coming to a finish. The European season is really kicking off so we're going to be looking at all of the stages and then giving a podium prediction for the GC at the end of the video. Stage 1 finishes up a very classic Etoile de Bessege finish which in the past two editions has been won by Mass Pedersen and Christophe Laporte respectively. Finishing up the Velegard finish, very very punchy, less than a kilometre, kind of 8%, really suited towards punchers and sprinters alike, so there's a quite a bit of crossover, so quite a few riders can contest this, sorts of, this sort of finish. Of course, I think a lot of the GC riders will just be looking to not, ne not necessarily take time, but not lose too much time. Of course, Pedersen is lining up in this race, so he will start off the stage as the favourite, but there are some other riders who will provide some stiff competition to him. Riders like Axel Laurence for Alpsin de Koenig, Benoit Cousnefoy, Jake Stewart, Magnus Court Nielsen, Arno de Lee, Nasu Buhani, Rasmus Tiller, Alexander Camp, all riders who I think could be contesting this stage. Of course, Pedersen does start off as the favourite because this is just a really suited finish to him. He knows how to do this climb knows how to win up here and he's got a really strong team around him so I will probably say that Pedersen will win the first stage but I do think that Arno de Lee will be pushing him very closely as well. Moving on to stage two we finish in Obey which has a very up and down profile all day very little flat along here at all but the final categorized climb does come with about 25 kilometers to go so in theory this should be one for the sprinters although it must be said that inside the last five kilometers or so it's just like going along a bread knife it just goes up and down up and down and it definitely drags up to the finish so once again this is suited towards a lot of those riders who i mentioned just previously especially a pedersen and a Dali, for example because it's, it's not too hard it's like a slightly attritional day but it's certainly well within their capabilities. So I think it would be between Pedersen and Delete again, but I do expect like Buhani to do quite well here, or if not him, Luca Mazzato, their new signing for this year. Jake Stewart and Sam Watson, both for Group Armour, could do a good job. We saw them matched up in the Tour of Britain last year where they did really well. Axel Laurence, after doing so well at the Crow Race last year, I think I'm looking forward to seeing what he could do. And maybe even a bit of a wild card like Ben Turner for the Ineos Grenadiers. He showed that in the Vuelta last year he was doing a couple of sprints, so maybe he might get involved as well. But I think that Pedersen will win stage two as well. Stage three, we do, again, quite a lot of climbs around Bessege, very similar to when Benjamin Thomas won last year. A very sort of attritional day towards the end, especially in, in the last 20 kilometers, we've got two climbs. The Col du Trelis, which is 2.8 kilometers at 6.2%. And then the Col de Bruces, which is 2.4 kilometers at 5.1%, both within the last 20 kilometers. Whether a team will realize that Pedersen is really the dominant sprinter in this race and therefore needs to be dropped or whether Pedersen's on such good form that they can't drop him I'm not too sure which way it will go in terms of teams that have the capabilities of trying to drop Pedersen I think it largely lies within EF's capabilities to do this if they were working for Magnus Court for example they have riders like Simon Carr, Ben Healy, Mark Padun, Piccolo and Nielsen Paulus to all try and light up that climbers are all really strong climbers so I think that they could be the team that tries to drop Pedersen and it just depends you know can Magnus Court then finish it off he will still be up against guys like Axel Laurence I expect to probably still be there whether like Buhani might still be there as well Kuznafwa can he do something in this finish as well but I think realistically I've got to go with some a bit different I think that Pedersen will get dropped and I think it will be Magnus Court Nielsen who wins stage three and continuing EF's very strong start to the season which started in the Tour Down Under. Stage 4 goes up Le Mont Bouquet which is the big sort of mountain top finish if you want to call it that in this race. 4.6 kilometers averages 9% last year it was Tobias Harden the Johansson who won this ahead of Jay Vine and Antonio Tiberi. So it's a really tough climb of course averaging 9% it's really difficult. In terms of the GC riders for this team I think it's probably best to start with the Ineos Grenadiers. They probably have, in my eyes, three main contenders. Michal Kwiatkowski, 
Pavel Sivakov and also Ben Tullett. Of course, I don't know which one they're going to be going for. They haven't released anything or hinted at anything. One of those three could certainly be a GC candidate in this race. You also have Group Palmer, Tio Pino in his final season as a pro. What can he do? He finished 11th in this race last year. Can he go a bit better and try fight for the podium? Possibly. Matthias Skelmos Jensen for Trek Segafredo. After all, he won the Tour of Luxembourg last year and then did really well in the World Champs. Has he managed to carry that over through the winter? And is he going to be able to hit this race pretty hard? It's a race that suits him, especially considering there's a time trial in the next stage. So I'd certainly be watching out for Matthias Skelmos Jensen. EF, kind of similar to Ineos, have so many riders. Ben Healy, Padun, Piccolo, and Nielsen Paulus. In all reality, I think that it could be Ben Healy that they go for, considering that in the Trofeo Calvia in Mallorca, he finished third after being in the breakaway, behind like Rui Costa and Louis Vavaca. So I think that Ben Healy's looking in really good form, arguably the one who looks the best out of all those riders. So I don't know which one we're going to go for, but Ben Healy could certainly be one. Uh, Kevin Vauquelin, we'll see what he can do. Dylan Turns would be another strong candidate for this stage as well. Pierre Latour as well. We've got Anders, Harland Johansson as well. I think that Ineos is going to win this stage considering that they have such a strong team. And I think that it's going to be Pavel Sivakov to win this stage and put some time into others ahead of stage five, which is a time trial up to Alès, which is really characterised by the climb up to the finish line, which is 2.8 kilometres at 5.6%. The time trial is 10.5 kilometres long. There's some great time trials up here. Ghana's one up here before. Of course, Ghana isn't here this time. And one of the strongest contenders who has done well here before is, of course, Mass Pedersen. Once more, he will be a favourite for this stage, as will Matthias Skelmos Jensen. What about Ineos, perhaps? Um, Sivakov, he did a good time trial in the Vuelta last year. We'll see what perhaps Ben Tullett could do as well. Benjamin Thomas, he would be another great shout for this stage as well. Kevin Vauquelin, Magnus Court Nielsen, Stefan Bissiger. Haven't even mentioned him yet. Bissiger would be a great shout, but of course there is that climb and he's not a very well-renowned climber. Will he lose too much time there? This is certainly one a time trial which can be won by a wide variety of riders. In my opinion, I think that it will be Matthias Skelmos Jensen who will win this. I think that his climbing ability will allow him to really go up that climb super fast as well. And he's really aero as well on the TT bike. So I'll go with him to win the time trial on stage five. Which then leads me nicely on to who I think is going to finish on the podium in this race. So I am going to go with Pierre Latour to finish in third place. And then I think in second place will be Matthias Skelmos Jensen. And then in first place, I think Pavel Sivakov will win. Bit of a different podium, definitely taking a bit of a gamble on the Ineos guys, but we'll just wait and see how it goes. Be sure to put in the comments down below who you think is going to finish on the podium. And all that is left to say is to keep safe out there, and I'll see you in the next video. Salut!